Hello and welcome to the first in a series of instructional videos covering the maintenance and general use of Pine's Rainbow R6 Concentration Monitor and its counterpart software, AU Pro 7.0. The unit we see here is the Rainbow R6. The R6 is a versatile and convenient quantitative tool and the follow-up to the widely adopted Rainbow R2 instrument. The R6 possesses a wide variety of potential applications, including, but not limited to, dissolution testing, flux or permeability studies, solubility measurements, supersaturation and precipitation studies, and formulation screenings, all facilitated by its capabilities in robust real-time UV vis spectroscopy through a series of variable path length fiber optic probes. The R6 can be fitted with up to a maximum of eight parallel UV vis measurement channels, seen here along the top of the instrument. Each features an independent UV vis spectrometer and fiber optic dip probe, allowing for the acquisition and real time processing of concentration data at a freely variable collection interval for up to eight assay vessels in a single run. The R6 serves as the quantitative core of many of Pine's dissolution and permeability testing instrumentation including the micro-dis and mean-dis dissolution monitors, and the microflux, bioflux and macroflux combined dissolution and permeability testing apparatus. The R6 features a reworked lamp control feature, and you can see from the front of the instrument that the deuterium lamp is now accessible from the front panel. So please do note that for safety purposes opening this panel will automatically cut power to the lamp, so this panel should not be opened during instrument operation. The lamp usage time may be read from the screen located here. Integration times obtained for each channel can be expected to increase with the age of the lamp, so in the interests of maintaining optimum performance the lamp should be replaced every 2000 hours. The revised lamp hardware also allows the AEPRO software direct control of the lamp itself, enabling automatic shut-off of the lamp post-assay, and even mid-assay during sequences with a point collection interval of longer than one hour, lending to a significantly improved lamp lifetime. The instrument is powered on with one press of the power button, like so. On the front panel, we have two status lights of note. On the left, indicating the status of the shutter, which controls the emission of the light through the fiber optics. When illuminated, the shutter is open and allowing light to pass. The system's single deuterium lamp and shutter provides illumination for every channel on the instrument by way of a fiber optic splitter cable. On the right is the lamp status light which when illuminated indicates that the deuterium lamp is active. The lamp will only power on when the device is connected to a properly licensed copy of AE Pro software. Running from the top of the instrument, we have the fiber optic probes. There are 16 connectors on top of the instrument facilitating the connection of up to eight probes on eight individual measurement channels. Each channel has two connectors, one from which emits light from the deuterium lamp, and the second which transmits light returning from the fiber optic probes to each of the individual channel's diode array detectors. The rainbow diode array detectors possess an observable wavelength range of 200 to 720 nanometers and are critical for facilitating effective in-situ analysis. In such cases, being able to assess the full UV vis absorption spectrum of an analyte is essential. Dilution steps are not possible during in-situ analysis as they are with offline quantitative techniques, so being able to select wavelengths unaffected by peak saturation or distortion from turbidity is important for accuracy in measurements of concentration. The inclusion of visible region wavelengths 
is also important in the process of applying baseline correction techniques. Now, some important notes on care for the fibre optic probes. The cables themselves are reasonably durable, but possess a minimum bend radius of 20 centimetres, meaning that no two parts of the cable should ever be parallel to one another at a distance of 20 centimetres or less. Bends greater than this risk damaging the fibre optics. At the end of the fibre optic cable is the metal immersion probe, on the end of which is a screw fitting for variable path length tips, which are available in 20, 10, 5, 2 and 1 mm lengths. As the path length reduces, the likelihood of air bubbles becoming entrapped in the path becomes greater, especially so with the 2 and 1 mm tips. Bubbles may be removed from the path either by knocking the probes lightly, or their formation may be discouraged by rinsing the probe tip with a small amount of the medium prior to immersion, in order to break the surface tension between air inside the tip and the medium. Using degassed media is also advisable. The correct tip length for your application is dependent on a number of factors. Firstly, the degree of molar absorption you can expect from your analyte, and also its solubility. By the Bill Lambert law, the distance which light travels through a medium will be proportional to the observed absorbance from absorbing substances in the light path, meaning that altering the path length in use from, say, the 5mm to the 10mm tip will cause a doubling of the observed absorbance. So, generally speaking, longer path lengths are more applicable for weakly absorbing or poorly soluble samples. Conversely, increasing the light path will also cause an increase in the amount of light scattered by particulates present in the medium, so smaller path lengths become preferable in situations where you must work in highly turbid assay media. When selecting a path length tip initially, we advise basing your initial selection on the expected concentration ranges shown here. Bear in mind that also you should aim to remain below a working absorption value of 1.6 absorbance units. This is because, at values greater than 1.6 absorbance units, you will begin to observe a loss of linearity in the relationship between concentration and absorbance, which will begin to introduce quantitative errors. Tips may be replaced simply by holding the metal probe securely and screwing them on to the end of the probe, turning left to loosen and right to tighten. The probes and tips are broadly compatible with the majority of common laboratory reagents. We recommend deionized water, methanol or isopropyl alcohol for general purpose cleaning, or DMSO for very stubborn contaminants. Acetone should not be used as it can attack the epoxy which binds the mirror to the tip. Heating and sonication of the tips should also be avoided. When not in use, tips should be removed and the probes left dry in air. When organising the path length tips, take care to ensure that one full set of tips is kept for each probe. We will talk about this again when we come to address calibration of the instrument, but know for now that each tip will possess a small variance in its real physical length. So swapping tips of the same quoted length between probes can introduce quantitative errors in calibrations, even if the stated length of the tip is identical. For this reason, Swapping path length tips between probes requires recalibration, but is generally best avoided. Lastly, do remember not to ever overbend or twist the fibre optic cables. This concludes our overview of the R6 hardware. 
the next video in this series will address setting up the rainbow for general use and will provide an introduction to the AEPRO 7.0 software.